Hey everybody, and welcome to the next episode of the Tech Connects podcast. Every month, we have great guests who share their expertise about the current state of the tech careers world. From the hottest tech skills to the state of the tech hiring market to what companies are doing to attract and retain top talent. Our latest guest is Shadi Rostami, who's Vice President of Engineering at Amplitude, which builds a unified data analytics platform among other products. She's built and run engineering teams and spearheaded the development of products and services incorporating big data, cloud computing, and much more. That background gives her spectacular insight into the rise of data democratization, which is the ability for employees throughout the organization to gather and analyze data without much training or assistance from data scientists, data analysts, and other experts. Lots of companies over the years have pledged to design tools and platforms to make data democratization more of a mainstream thing. And I'm wondering about the current state of those efforts. Is data democratization gaining momentum, or is there still much work to be done? Is it possible to make an entire organization data literate? And how does that change the job of data scientists and other experts in the field? So with that, let's listen in. Cool. So thank you for obviously jumping on and taking a few minutes to walk us through um, everything related to data democratization, data literacy, data engineering, um, everything else data related. And I wanted to start off just by you're VP of engineering at Amplitude, and I'm just kind of curious, and our audience is going to be curious, especially the people who are interested in data. I mean, what does that actually mean for you on a day-to-day basis? Like, what do you do? What's what's your work? Yeah, so, uh, yes, I'm head of engineering at Amplitude. Actually, a big part of Amplitude is building a solution. Our companies build a platform, a digital analytics platform that helps other companies make decisions based on data and unlock the power. But we also use data a lot ourselves, too, for our own day-to-day operation. So uh, whether I, I go and check our dashboard every morning to see how are the state of the world, how are things happening, or sometimes go deeper as I see, you know, you know, we had, a, you know, some, some glitches in the system. So there's a lot of that. We use Amplitude a lot, but we also use other data sources and data technology that's well, like Snowflake and so on and so forth in, in our in system. No, that, that, that makes total sense. The um, one thing that we've noticed, because we run giant surveys and studies and so on involving lots of companies is that, I mean, even kind of very traditional companies that before might not have considered a data practice or anything like that are rapidly sort of waking up to the potentials of data to you know, everything from kind of figuring out tactical daily problems to kind of, you know, trying to mine data for key strategic insights, things that they need to do in the future. Um, But it also kind of creates a situation where a lot of companies just simply aren't sure what to do. Um, And one of the things is, especially for companies that are just getting into the first time, is is data literacy. Um, So a lot of organizations talk about data literacy, but... Mm -hmm. You know, they want to give employees the tools to do data analysis and things like that, like not just data scientists and analysts, but also kind of like people who are doing other things within the organization. But employees, contractors, whoever, their their current workflows are just swapped. Like everybody's pulled in 20 different directions. Everybody's busy. Um, so since, I mean, speaking from your perspective of somebody who deals with data every day, like how can an organization actually empower or structure its efforts, I guess, to give people kind of the time and resources to become more data literate or use tools or just kind of be more comfortable with data almost to actually get the yeah. benefits out of it. Yeah, that's a very, very good question. And that's a topic that a lot of data leaders are thinking about it on a day-to-day basis. Actually, I've talked with a number of data leaders and there are two, basically two camps as how data leaders think about it. Some of them, the data leader and data science team, they think of themselves as the center of decision-making process. So everybody believes that they need to use data and make decisions between data. There's no question of that. But how the approaches are different. So some are in the center of that. Uh, so then, you know, the team that want to ask questions, they, they basically come to them, ask a question, they get the answer, or they, they make very basic dashboard for them, and they just go and basically investigate that. That's one camp of people. In the, in that world, basically, the data science and the data leaders are basically in the center of decision making, and they can become the bottleneck, and they can be overwhelmed by the questions, and everybody's in a line to get their answers. We, actually, our CEO uses the term data breadline. So you're waiting in the line, you get your answers, you get your servings. 
then you have to go at the end of the line. If you have a follow-up question, you have to wait for your turn to ask the next question. So that's, I see in a number of companies like that. But I see a number of companies that the data team think about themselves as facilitators. They are enablers. They are not in the center of decision-making. They're enablers for the organization. So I think that is the first important thing that anybody who's going on that journey decides which, which path do I want to be? Do I want to be a facilitator? Do I want to teach people how to fish? Or do, do I want to give them a fish because I don't think that they can learn how to fish? So I think that's the first step that, that the leader needs to make that call. But if you are if you are thinking about okay, I want to be the enabler, I want to be the facilitator, I want to get people started. So the, one thing that is very important, if you want people to become data literate, it's allowing them to do easy exploration. So there are two aspects. One is that it should be easy because if it, as you said, people have too much time, too much things on their plan. So if if it's going to be difficult or if they, they feel, you know, uh, intimidated or whatever, they're just going to stop and they just don't. So first it should be easy. The other one that is important that it should be exploratory. So if you just give somebody a dashboard, it's, it's not going to be exploratory because they cannot change things. They cannot go ask the next question. So, so I think that is, and, and we have seen the two end of the spectrum solutions that have been out there. So for example, companies that they're relying on fully data warehouse and the people who want to ask questions, they need to know SQL language. You would basically, you are eliminating 90% of your non-technical users because that's intimidating. They don't know SQL. So, and then at the other end of the spectrum, if you are just, again, as I mentioned earlier, give them a dashboard, then that's also, they won't, you know, they will just ask, they will get that, but that's it. They, they don't go beyond that. So as, as you're looking of tools and solution to enable, you know, this data literacy, it's important to be thinking about a solution that help people to do easy exploration. So I think that's, that's the core part of it. Uh, does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah, no, it, it makes total sense. And I mean, I look just as an aside, I love the idea of kind of a digital breadline because it's true, especially in organizations where you have a limited number of data experts who are trying to kind of field all these. I mean, I've been I've been in that line any number of times. Um, in in terms of tools that facilitate that, I mean, you know, obviously people need to be trained on it, and hopefully, you know, the training is is relatively expedient. Um, do you think that? I mean underline that there's also these all these concepts with data analysis like just base you know how to how to tell signal from noise and so on like these very kind of conceptual things um and i would imagine that i mean some organizations might want to almost send people to an online training course or something like that to kind of grasp the fundamentals of data do you think that's necessary for people i mean people who are coming into data do you think they need to understand like kind of abstract like kind of almost more I guess, philosophical concepts under it? Or do you think that just like knowing how to use the tool and do easy analysis, like on a very tactical level, do you think that's enough for them? Yeah, I think, I think you have a very good question is that, uh, and I, I feel like that to be successful in that journey, the data people and the business people need to become very partner, very close partner. What do I mean by that? I mean that the data per person should not be starting from thinking about, uh, you know, only the taxonomy of abstract data. They should be thinking about what are the questions that the business people are asking? What are the things that are important? So they're, they're actually starting from this common language. Uh, they also need to be thinking, okay, I'm, I'm having people who are starting on their journey. Maybe I should not overwhelm with that. So let's think about an iterative process. Let's not start to capture all the data and then they get lost in the chaos. You know, democratization is about managing control, versus, uh, find the right balance between control and chaos, right? If you, if you give them all of the data because you want to enable them and they might get lost. So I think it's uh, one of the things that I've heard people who use it and are successful is going through an iterative process, you know, capture some data, get them to do some exploration. Then they can go and go further in their path. I think that is, that is very important. Uh, you know, you know, make sure that the date, one of the things that can happen with the data is that it can easily become, uh, you know, uh, chaotic, 
I don't want to use the word dirty, but chaotic and hard to understand. So make sure that you're governing that data, you, you know, and, and figure out a way that to make sure that the data makes sense and people understand it. And, and then, you know, uh, you know, make sure that again, you, you're enabling the, the team uh, to do some guardrail exploration. And for that guardrail exploration, maybe you start some training you, because people who haven't done anything with data, they're starting from point zero. Do some basic training, but do the training that are focused, uh, rather than teaching them how to write SQL, but do the training that are focused. How do you answer your business question? Because then people are, you know, interested in it and people can get started, make sense, it's contextualized. So those are the things that I feel like, you know, training is very, very important, but I want to make sure that we are not doing abstract training. We're not sending people to colleges. It's about looking at the use case and working on that use case. I think that's, that I've heard that uh, how people as they are getting uh, this happen. But when you do that, actually, when you start doing and when you have a tool or a system that people can do a little bit of exploration on their own and they, they get a little bit better on their data literacy, now then your data uh, engineering, data science team can actually collaborate with the business and they can exchange ideas. So it's not just give me this report. It's just that now we're exchanging, we're collaborating. Uh, the the question that we're asking are, are more interesting. And and the other benefit in this model, if you, if you can get there, uh, is that now the data science and data engineering team can focus their effort on a more strategic and harder problems because the easy ones, the teams are answering themselves or the relatively easy ones. So you can work. I'm sure there's always a very harder problem that you need somebody to go very deep, write a specific model. But I think that way you can get to the to the right balance. Do you, so do you think that, I mean, the, the democratization of data and like kind of the proliferation of these tools, like this, this whole trend that we've just been talking about, do you think that it's going to appreciably change the jobs of like data experts? Do you think that we're going to see sort of this evolution where data scientists and so on are like actually devoting more time to those problems and so on because they have people kind of doing their own low level stuff? Or do you think that that's, do you think that's something already underway? Or do you think that that's something kind of in the future over here that it hasn't quite hit that point yet? Yeah, it's it's already underway, but different companies are at different stage of their maturities. Uh, so a, a lot of companies that are very early in their maturity, they might not have gone to that stage, but a number of companies who have gone further, they might be further. But I really believe that the future is about, because we want to basically use our time of our data science and data engineers efficiently. If they're just always sitting there and getting the question, converting to a SQL statement or whatever, and waiting for that to run and send, that's not exciting, right? We want them to be, and, and, we want them to be answering more sophisticated one and also working the data engineer thinking about building tools so people can actually get their own answer. So I see a shift and the shift is underway. Uh, uh, but how long is it going to take for all the company? Of course, different companies are at different stage, but I, I, if I, if I want to do a prediction, uh, uh, look at my glass ball, uh, is that you will see more of the data engineer people thinking about building tools, using tool, enabling, building the pipeline so that enable the line of business to answer their question. And the data science team hopefully get to the point that they can focus on much harder exploration, much harder question that they would be answered. And that gets them a lot more excited that their work is is not is not they're not being bogged down by all these questions that are very easy, they're just repetitive. They're really actually finding real uh, you know, valuable insight that is very hard and you need the data science to go very deep to get that answer. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. Um, in addition, I mean, we've, we've been bad around SQL and, you know, obviously relational databases are a huge point of it. But I mean, if people want to become that kind of that truly insightful data scientist who's tasked with these really difficult questions and then goes in and, and delivers like these stunning insights that the company readjusts around strategically, um, what else do they need to know? And I mean, I assume it's a mix of like technical skills, obviously, um, but then also there, there's probably like kind of almost an intuition or a soft skill component too. I mean, what do, what do people need if they want to kind of succeed at that expert level? Yeah. Yeah, that's a very good point. I think you're absolutely correct. You need to have the basic technical skills because you're going too deep into data. But it's it's a very important role because 
these data scientists and data engineers are very cross-functional. They're working with a lot of line of business. So as they're thinking about my data, my data cleanup, my questions, they really need to understand, okay, what is what is the line of business? What is the question that I'm trying to get answered? What is the outcome of my work? How it happens? So that, that creates actually more than a traditional software engineer you require to work cross-functionally with the with the line of business, understand what are they trying to drive, what is what is the metric that is important for them. So uh, you know it is it is it is very important. And and you might you might get at some point uh, a little bit of a maybe imposter syndrome. I'm talking to a you know a, a CFO of a company. I'm talking to a, you know a high level you know finance or or a, or marketing or uh, sales guys uh, and it's it's a different especially if you're coming from engineering or sci- you know, scientific background it's a different you know discipline but so being comfortable to learn and be okay that okay this is a i'm helping them to answer this question but i think it's important that i learn what is top of mind for them i'm not just answering the question because sometimes if you if you do that, you might you might find out okay why are they asking this question? What is the reason that they want to? And you might find a better way, actually a better analysis that can help them answer answer that question or, or actually answer the real root cause that they're asking for. Do you think? I mean, they've been talking a day. I mean, for years there's sort of been this 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 rapidly escalating amount of data that companies potentially have access to, whether it's just sort of from online sources or IoT or what have you. And so you just get this kind of constant flood, of, especially on an enterprise level, this constant inflow. Um, does that, I mean, so you got data tools are becoming more sophisticated, but the data sets and so on are also becoming larger. Um, is is the amount of complexity involved in a data scientist job is that escalating rapidly like in your in terms of your daily workflows and so on i mean have you been finding it harder over the past couple of years to actually like mine things for insights or is it actually becoming easier because the tools are more powerful um it just seems like everything is getting a lot more complex really quickly yeah i think um, one thing that is important to think about is uh data you know, I talked a lot about tool, but there is also a a cultural element in it. That uh, are we are we keeping the right d- discipline? Are we thinking about managing our data correctly, keeping our house clean, or is it we are letting it go? You know, uh, you know, very very you know, complicated or chaotic. Uh, so it is you know the complexity is getting higher. The tools are getting more sophisticated but i think it's important to be thinking about the practices the processes uh, that we are taking on do i need to for example expose all of that data to line of business and they're just going to get lost uh, again i mentioned about iterative process of thinking about it uh, you know maybe maybe these are the data that needs to be exposed to them so they can get the answer and these are the data that doesn't need exposure and can be kept at at you know at one level, so I think people have been talking a lot about the data lake, data warehouse. They're trying to create that level of that. Okay, what, where is all of you dump everything, and where are the ones that you can get that? So there is a hierarchy to think about what you give access to to make sure that people can can derive insight from that. And I think that's important always to be thinking about it. So when you're thinking about data literacy, data uh, managing that, there is a very you know you know change management part of that as you're thinking about you're making people to become more data literate so you have to be thinking how how do i manage that change how, what are the things that what are the processes i'm adding what is going to take us a step back if the data is not clear so those are very important and i think maybe it goes back to the game the thing that you need to be having the soft skills of not just good programmer or good developer but thinking about some of those changes that you need to you need to be driving in the organization uh, but yeah, the, both the the data complexity have increased. The tools are are have have a, got a lot more powerful. Just making sure that you manage and use the right tool, it's very very important. It's becoming even more important. No, that that makes total sense. I mean, when it comes to data literacy, you mentioned the potential for an organization to accidentally take a step back almost and you know certainly with the complexity and the the sheer project management of like uh, giving permissions and so on. I mean, I can definitely see how that would happen. Um, 
how, I mean, how, for example, like if you're evaluating something like this or a setup, um, how do you know whether like what you've set up is actually succeeding and, or versus it having taken a step back? I mean, like kind of what metrics or how, how would you begin to kind of evaluate something like that to make sure that what you're doing is actually helpful? Yeah, that's a very good point. So uh, one of the things that I hear from our customers who have been successful uh, is that they, somebody says that I'm in a meeting and my 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 boss asks a question about something and I can find the answer right away and give it to them. So that's a basic great sign that the person, you know, they're discussing and they need to be, you know, getting something and you can immediately get that answer and the conversation continue. That's the ultimate goal that we want everybody to be getting that. But there, there are things as, as, as somebody is basically is in charge of that transformation in the company and wants to make sure that create data literacy that they will be looking at. For example, our customers of Amplitude that are using as a tool in, in that process, they are looking at how many people are actually using Amplitude? What are the weekly active users that are coming? How many people are coming and actually checking out? How many people are actually uh, saving and generating content? That's important because am I just consumer and look at the dashboard? Or am I going and changing something and running that analysis? Looking at some metrics give you an insight. Are people are actually, you know, uh, only consumer? Are they becoming uh, you know, producer of data, and as they're they're producing more data, are creating new analysis. Basically, tells you that they're going into that literacy path, and they're getting more sophisticated. So, having some of these metrics of the the usage or uh, the sheer number of the usage or the kind of the usage, it can be really valuable uh, for uh, for thinking about how we. Uh, how, how we're measuring our success because I'm sure transformation is a, is a long process, but I think you, you have a very, very good point that we need to make sure, team need to make sure that they're setting some goals and metrics to measure those successes. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. From the from the data scientist side, I mean, it's, it's exciting times, it's also very complex times, et cetera. Um, how does, I mean, a lot of the data that we look at deals with hiring and retention and, and things that sort of attract very highly specialized tech professionals and data scientists and so on into coming on to an organization. Um, and I'm wondering, I mean, organizations that have this need for data analysis and they're trying to attract data specialists to come on board, I mean, is it a question of companies presenting interesting problems? I mean, what, as you talk to data scientists and data experts, like what's What's attracting them to work for one company or another? I mean, is it interesting problems? Is it cool tools? Is it, I mean, what's, 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 what drives people, I guess? Yeah, that, that's a very good point. Of course, I haven't talked with every data scientist. Yeah, no, of course but not. I'm just, if, you know, if you're doing the sense, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes. If I were a data scientist, I would be actually what excites me because they have a lot of expertise. They can do a lot of things. It's about, what would I be spending my time on and what kind of problem am I doing? Am I spending my time on, uh, you know, just serving the bread in the bread line and answering questions or am I spending my time on, on basically doing more strategic analysis that can be very impactful in the direction of the company? I, I really truly believe that everybody when they, they join a company, they're, they're thinking about what impact do I have in the success of the company. So, and I think that is very fulfilling to feel like, okay, I am, you know, I am having this impact that I'm enabling people so they can get their answer on their own. They can still do that. And I, I'm basically facilitating that. But also I'm spending my time and answering this hard, sophisticated problem, because as engineering data scientists, we have we have been trained for a long time, and you want to make sure that you are getting that you know that satisfaction of how I'm solving hard problem. So I think these two aspects is very important. That you know, as I talk with data scientists, they think about okay, what kind of a problem am I going to be uh, solving uh, when I'm joining a company? Uh, and 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 I think and you know uh, you know as as I have talked with a number of you know, teams that are using, you know, you know, amplitude or tools like amplitude is that they feel like, yes, you know, I'm, I'm working on this hard thing, but it's not coming at the cost of the company not getting their answer because people are getting their answer on their own and now have the capacity 
to work on the most sophisticated one. So I think that is a very a very important aspect of what kind of a, a job you'll be doing. Of course, it's also important to think about the how does the company think about data? How how are they on their maturity? model so you get different kind of data scientists some people are get really excited about i'm going to be creating this transformation and i'm going to drive that and i'm going to drive that and some people are saying no i want to be somewhere that this transformation are done i can focus on the hard problem that i would be focused and that goes back to the kind of a little bit of your your soft skill versus hard skill or versus technical skill which one really satisfies you because as I said, if you're doing transformation and making company become self-serve, there might be an element of really working cross-functionally, helping people understand, helping people get started. And that might be very fulfilling for somebody who's, who's more, you know, you know, ex- excited and interested in that. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. You know, I mean, obviously you want to tackle the hard problems. You want to make a difference. You want to kind of just shift everything forward. So no, that, that's, that's, I, it, I, that definitely aligns with what sort of I've been chatting with data scientists and analysts about so No, that's great. And that's it, folks. If you're interested in analyzing data for crucial insights, it's more important than ever to be aware of how the push for data democratization and literacy are changing organizations of all sizes. Here are some key takeaways from our chat. First, as companies collect and analyze more data, there's more pressure on data analysts and scientists to deliver results for the organization. This results in a data bread line in which employees are lining up for their local data experts' precious time and expertise. It's not necessarily a sustainable system, which is why many companies are actively trying to figure out how to best give their employees the tools and data sets they need to perform effective data analysis on their own. Second, companies need to walk something of a tightrope when it comes to empowering their workers and making them data literate. You can't just throw raw data at someone untrained in analytics and expect them to mine crucial insights. But you also can't just give them a dashboard and expect them to understand everything that's going on. Easy to use tools for self-serve data analytics, combined with strategic help from data scientists, can go a long way toward helping an organization succeed on the data front. Third, effective data analysis is also a result of a company's culture. It's not just about hiring the right data experts and signing up for the right tools. Companies need to really think about practices and cultures around data and how to make sure everyone in the organization is best served by those processes in place. It means that data experts and their companies need to examine usage metrics and pause to analyze results. A good feedback loop will ensure everyone is getting what they need. So with that, we'll see you next time. And remember, DICE is your best resource to find the tech talent you need to fill your open roles. And for technologists, the best place to grow your tech career.